Hi folks, welcome to g for g here on YouTube. Today we're in Marvel Strike Force and we're going to be taking a look at the new content that we've got going on in the game. Uh, if you haven't already done so, make sure you update your game from your respective Play Store. Uh, it will definitely force you into doing that if you go to launch the game and haven't done it already. Uh, in case you are definitely a gamer fan and are unaware of it, over on Twitch and their own site, the Summer Games Done Quick speedrunning marathon is on. And uh, if you're somebody like me who's played games all your life, it's a fantastic event to watch. It happens in the winter for Amazing Games Done Quick. It happens in the summer for Summer Games Done Quick. They raise money for usually... Uh, one of two causes, one is a cancer cause, and the current one is Doctors Without Borders, and they've consistently, in recent times, reached uh, $2 million of donations and higher, and it's just a really, really interesting week to be on Twitch watching these things, because you'll see games from your childhood, like SNES and NES games, all the way up to modern games like Cuphead, which just happened to come by. So uh, if you've got a free moment, definitely go over to Twitch and check it out. And of course, if you're in the donating mindset, uh, it is to a good cause. And there is usually not controversy concerning the donations for games done quick. So back to the topic at hand, we have Ant-Man and Wasp content going on in Marvel Strike Force. You'll see Wasp hanging out over here by Get Heroes. Events now has Ant-Man in it. When you go to your inbox, you will have uh, I Am The Ant-Man, which is basically a directive to go into the events for himself. You also have Team Up Tales, which is the shield medic sitting down discussing what it's like to work with Ant-Man and Wasp and he is deeply afraid of insects. Uh, I haven't watched this yet but if you've ever seen the commercial spot for Marvel Strike Force he's the guy who narrates the main commercial and then takes a laser shot and trips and falls uh, out of the Quinjet on the way down the ramp and then Drax laughs at him and says he should not have gone first. So I, I really like that commercial. I find it funny. Uh, challenges today was Orb Fragments and Catalysts of Change. Uh, milestones right now is Gold. Over here for offers, there is none currently. Uh, they have been running some Shield offers for the Iron Man event. And I believe they did some Mercenary ones for the Gold one. Now there's nothing. If you go over to Supplies... And we take a look at orbs. We have the premium orb. And then we also have the Ant-Man orb. And you'll notice it basically takes those uh, red, I believe they're Pym Particle containers. Um, you'll see that over here as the currency. More on that in a moment. We have a Dark Arts orb, which can give you Mordo shards from anywhere from 6 to 180. And then other rewards. And then, you know, typical orbs that are up are still what you would expect. Now, speaking of Mordo, I wanted to dip into him briefly as I did get some of the Mordo offers when they were out there. I figured why not? It is a brand new character. I mean, a roster is a roster even if he's not immediately super viable. So here he is. Here's Mordo. Looking very Fu Manchu-ish over there. I've got him at 35 in Tier 3. I really haven't used him yet, and I want to. I'm trying to get him in range of my B team to have him out there to use. So his first attack, or his uh, level 1 basically, right now attacks the primary target for 140% damage and a 50% chance to apply one random negative effect. If I take him up to four, he goes up to a 10% damage to the primary attack. So he would go up to 150. 
and it's a guaranteed negative effect to the primary target. So, I mean, that's a whopping plus 50% chance over there. I think that's pretty good. Um, I would kind of like to know what are the negative effects that are on the table for it. I think that would be something interesting to know. His Mesmerize right now is applying a blind to the target and a 50% chance to blind up to two additional ones. If I upgrade the level, 50% chance to apply slow to one target. I think the blind is the best thing here. There's several other slows in the game, most notably Quake. I think Quake kind of does it better, but the blind uh, is, of course, very good. And when coupled up with Hawkeye, that's a, a lot of misses on the table. Demons of Denak, for me, <coughs> attack all targets for 100% damage and apply heal block for one turn. This attack cannot miss. If I upgrade it here, he goes up to 130 damage and then again the next one after that will be 160 and finally at level 5 you get two heal blocks I would imagine that even if healing is not particularly that big in PvP or arena actually it might have a good thing on missions especially dealing with lots of units that might get a rather large AoE heal from a particular source and his passive is, on the death of any character, he heals himself for 5% of this character's max health. Plus, on the death of a mystic character, he heals himself for 10% of this character's max health. Now, I don't know if it means the this character as of the dying character, or this character as in Mordo. The game is kind of sketchy with that language at times. Um... At the next level, if a mystic dies, he gains ability energy. And the level after that, he heals for 15% max health on the death of a mystic. But it looks like a regular character still stays at 5. And then you got to bump him up to 4 if you want him to get more out of a regular character dying. Now, interesting thing to note. This is sort of a thing that was done in DC Legends. Mostly with a character called Deathstroke. And a chump named Lobo. I say chump because people kept Lobo as a quote-unquote Lobo, L-O-W-B-O. Meaning Lobo, since he had such a high chance of, of resing, especially if other characters were alive, Lobo was often known to taunt, to draw attacks to himself. He was low on gear and would die frequently. Deathstroke had a passive that he gained a lot of benefits, a lot of buffs, if a character died. So what happened is, the Lobo constantly would be taunting, drawing attacks to himself, dying, had a very, very, very high chance of resurrecting if a lot of members on his team were available, and then Deathstroke was becoming a, a, a fucking Terminator beyond measure with Lobo constantly dying and rezzing and feeding Deathstroke the passive, I would think that if you had a very solid rezzer like, say, a Wolverine, that might be pretty good to pump up uh, Mordo a little bit. And the good thing is this kind of works on defense, too. It's brainless. Just have any character that has a chance to revive or healers who have a chance to revive people and Mordo might go uh, a little nuts with that. I actually did two blitzes in a row that had Wolverines and two Wolverines rezzed, which to me is a phenomenon that I think I only rarely ever see. Uh, so speaking of blitz, right now this is my B team. Medic was just recently kicked out and Hand Sork was put in. So my B team is Hand Sork. Hawkeye, Quake, Crossbones, and Daredevil. Daredevil's there for that first round mega hit. And then the team just kind of does what it does until Quake, usually followed right behind by Crossbones, do their AoE. And then Hawkeye does some AoE after, picks off some stragglers. The A team, however, is still Night Nurse, Cap, Widow, Yondu, and uh, Gamora. So I have to just collect my rewards real quick over here. 
All right, so the Ant-Man campaign. You go over to campaigns, and it, you know, it's funny. He, this is a very kind of almost Deadpool-looking pose. I mean, I know it's an Ant-Man pose, too, uh, but it kind of reminds me of something that I would imagine Deadpool doing. So you go over to I Am The Ant-Man, go here, and you'll notice there's the currency for the Ant-Man orb we were talking about, and it has its own energy which is called event energy ant man strike needs your help wow me seriously what do you need me to steal nothing we need a different set of skills this time around deadpool is storming a facility that houses the corrupted technovirus we need you to go in and da disable the distribution device have you asked hope to help on this one you know to make sure i don't screw things up this time and the Wasp is on a different operation with Black Widow. You're on your own this time. All right, Scott, you can do this. Okay, listen up. The facility is controlled by a corrupted vision. We need you to get in there and disable the security grid so we can sneak your support team in. And Lang, try not to accidentally go giant man on us while in transit. Last time your enormous butt crushed, butt crushed my favorite laptop. Yeah, sorry, that was an unfortunate mishap. So that was Quake talking over there and here it says only ant-man is allowed and you really can't pick anybody you just have to hit ready i love how it says team power is zero it's like ant-man doesn't actually count so for those of you who have noticed and maybe have not run into this before it is being played on a pc it is being played through an Android emulator called Bluestacks Beta N. Um, the game does not play too nicely with other emulators. Even somewhere the Google Play Store will allow you to install it. And then either is like all pink or does weird stuff. So Bluestacks Beta N, one of the best emulators for it. Use Ant-Man's special ability to ability block an enemy. His ultimate ability is to slow all opponents at once. So I think we will um, we'll start with the slow on everybody. Whoa! -ho -ho -ho! That was actually a pretty big hit. I like to see a hit that big as I think it would go well with um, Quake's AoE and everything, especially having another slow like that. And remember, Quake's is not a full AoE, it's a splash. So she only hits. Wow, that was. Poof, tasty. Attack the primary target for 180% damage. Copy a positive effect from the target to self and clear the copied effect. If Wasp is an ally, she also gains the copied effect. Wow, that's going to be a wicked team up. I think if those two run the field with Black Widow, that's going to be a lot of fun. But, you know, I wonder if they would accidentally wind up copying a taunt. I know... Um, Yondu never copies a taunt, but it is still, um, an interesting thing. So this guy's about up next, so I'm going to try and block his abilities. Hmm, nice dodge. Wow. The funny thing is I just happened to watch Civil War, uh last weekend because it is on Netflix and it had been a while since I watched it. Resistance is pretty good. I mean, granted this is a higher tiered Ant-Man than you would have right out the gate, but it's nice to see him perform at this level. Because, you know, hey, in all honesty, I, I know it's, a, it's an RPG trope to sometimes give you the uber powerful right in the beginning so you kind of see what you're getting into and then they get depowered or something knowing um oh and by the way yeah you can keep running the nodes out and there are these bonus nodes that supposedly have like a counter above them so you you can you know i just earned 50 but i can probably do it okay well 
and give me the, the particles on that one. Um, it's an RPG trope to do this, but it's also nice to see because you get an idea of what the character would be like at higher tiers, and it lets you know if you want to waste time on the person because this is the kind of game where resources are at a premium, and you don't want to throw experience chip and ability uh, bump ups to people that are like, you know what, I don't have a room for this guy anywhere. Um, I think he sucks. I don't think he fits in with anything I have, so it's always nice to make informed decisions. So this is my Super A squad over here. Uh, I may as well just go with it and see how completely overpowered my team is compared to the PvE content we're going to get into over here. Blasters and Brawlers deal heavy damage. Really? Hmm. Ah, uh, we have Corrupted Avengers and everybody again. So we've got a Corrupted Iron Man, Spider-Man, and some Ultrons. I'm gonna basically do my PvP rotation over here. Since Spider-Man's way out on his edge, I'm just apparently going to obliterate him. I wanted to get rid of him because he was out of uh, splash range of everybody. Yeah, you know what? Let's slow everybody. We've got a good amount of people on the field. It's about half of the remaining numbers. Really low damage on that one so clearly Ant-Man is at a much milder power level for this one I'm leaving see I'm leaving that dude over there weak for Gamora and I mean Gamora you have to set up but once you set her up she's obviously an absolute pleasure to deal with now that the taunter's out of the way See, that's something with Gamora that I think I, I kind of have a little bit of an issue with. If she kills the primary target on that level too, I don't think she chains very well. I could be wrong, but I could swear I don't think I've seen her chain when she gets that kill. Um, let's ability block the monstrosity. You ever look at the monstrosity and be like, man, that's like, that's fucking Bane. They just ripped off Bane on that one. Part of me does, but not on the most serious of levels. I'm not like, if I was working for DC, I wouldn't look at that guy and be like, alright man, we gotta fucking sue. That's Bane. But, yeah, it just, it's close. And I say that as a DC Legends player and often has to deal with Bane almost on a nearly daily basis at times, so. Anytime you get a Ravager Boomer from Yondu, the best thing you can do is try to dump the AoE before they die, but sometimes the enemies are just not in the right way for you to do it. So we'll do one more quick battle, and uh, then we will wrap the video up. Didn't get any... Didn't get any of the uh, Pym Vials there. I'm going to backtrack really quick, just to make sure... Because we can tell from supplies and orbs. Alright, so I've earned one set of 50. Let's try another auto win again. We'll do it three this time. Hmm. Still not getting those bonus drops. The gold is crap. Alright, one more to see what we've got. Technovirus distribution device is just up ahead. How do you know? Quick analyze stuff. 
So again, I'll, I'll keep the overpowered team just to make it quick. If you want a little bit more fun, you can bring characters that are on level. But if you just want to plow through it to the harder content, there is nothing stopping you from bringing your best line and just mowing everything down. To be even faster, honestly, I could probably get rid of Cap. I don't think I need to taunt if nobody's seriously under threat and just bring good DPS. Like bringing Quake would probably be better than bringing Captain, at least until I actually start running into trouble. Oh, I picked the same fight again. Didn't even realize that. It, or did I? 12. So that little quit battle over there was something that was pointed out to me in one of my older videos that if you want to just maintain your spot in Arena, and, um, yep, that was the same battle. Um, you can do that back out, and you do get credit for the daily, and you don't have to sit there and waste your time for it. So, I will bring Quake this time. It drops the team power a little bit, but, um, should make this a bit more fun, maybe even quicker. I didn't, I didn't know that. There were definitely times where I'm like, oh man, I gotta finish my dailies before 1 o'clock. All these arena battles, man. This guy's got double tanks, triple tanks. So fucking slow and annoying. Uh, yeah. Um, I think I remember who said it. I, I'm just blanking on his name at the moment. It might have been Dixie Normus. Uh, Dixie was like, dude, just hit quit battle. You'll get credit. You just won't get forward momentum from it. So it looks like we're dealing with Nick Fury, Black Panther. So we've got like Avengers and Shield Security. So I always like to take out the tanks first. Just so I have free reign to kill my primary target. So essentially that's my crossbones of the fight was that Shield Security. Ooh. Maybe I wish I did have a tank. And she resisted that shot from Hawkeye. Black Widow was like, fuck your anti stealth shit there, Clint. Let me do my damn job. And that's to be a stealthy annoyance. That's one of the good things about having Hawkeye on your offense when you're doing blitz and everything. He, if you're down at the lower levels, he's very good as an anti... Here comes the heal block. That's not too bad. Um, he's good as an anti-Electra, and then at the higher levels, he's good as an anti-Black Widow. Mm, we might not have people in the kill box, but at least she'll get the attack bar buff. Okay, cool. Well played. So, a lot of people... I've been running into a lot of questions on... Facebook groups lately who's better Gamora, uh, Gamora or Daredevil and in my absolute 100% opinion um, it is highly Gamora and not Daredevil. I mean Daredevil's level 3 is amazing but so is Gamora's and then Gamora buffs everything else she does after that one. Daredevil just has the one attack that's super strong and it does go early in combat but then he's just Daredevil afterwards, so yeah. Alright, at this point, um, we can't see the energy of all the others, but I mean, that's a 6, that's a 6. It's, it's kind of easy to plan out that out of 126, I definitely should have enough to go through these one time just to clear the mission, but I will... It looks like the bigger nodes do have a higher count. So I'm just going to do two auto wins over here. There we go. Finally got some Ant-Man orb fragments in there. So we should have 150 now. Alright, and <laughs> we need 2,000. So, you're going to have some choices there with your energy. You can, you know, either farm existing ones and, and hope that they drop on the auto win. 
or hold on to the energy and proceed through and then maybe decide later if you want to auto win one. Hard to tell if the energy count is going to go up from here. It seems like at least normal nodes stay at six and maybe the big nodes like this 2000 and the 3000 will be at 12. So there you go for the next fight the enemies don't look too tough over here nobody of, of standout other than uh, potentially her she can be a nuisance so there you go guys there is the new content in Marvel Strike Force that is out today don't forget to go in here and claim new dailies as soon as you possibly can uh, sadly there's a lot of times where like arena is the last thing that I do in my order and I do one and then I wait for that cooldown and then time's up and I'm like, oh crap, I didn't do the arena. And if you are ever in the game when it flips over, there are times where you bug the dailies. A lot of times I hear people say, oh, like my dailies didn't reset and what's going on and didn't do this and didn't do that and it's being all weird. It's because you were in the game at the time the dailies flipped over. And that makes the game weird at times. So just don't, don't do that. That's that's all you need to do is just don't do that. All right, guys, this is Napalm Dawn signing off. Hope you enjoyed this Marvel Strike Force video. Uh, definitely stay tuned to the channel. We got some more WoW Battle for Azeroth videos coming up. Um, I definitely want to do a Marvel Avengers Alliance video. It's going to be more of like a retrospective talking one than any new progress. I'm uh, just giving Goofy Troll a little bit of time to get his, uh, get some stuff together for that. And I will not ever be party to pressuring Goofy and be one of those people. So, uh, he and I had had a conversation recently. He knows I'm looking for some material to put out and do a video on. And he's all up for it. He's just getting some footage together for me. So, stay tuned. And everybody else, see you guys later. Have a good one.